Hello and thank you all for joining us in today's webinar uh, session in, which is one of EMR's webinar series. Uh, in this session we will uh, cover designing and analyzing a wireless power charger used in electric vehicles. My name is Majdi, Senior Application Engineer and I will provide this session. In today's webinar we will go through uh, uh, or a refresh memory about wireless power transfer principle and its applications then we will see the main design challenges of the such system and our proposed solution which is EMR's uh, solution to solve and overcome these issues different topologies will be uh, investigated then a section of simulation and results will be covered before we end our uh, session or our webinar we will have a live demonstration then we end by with a QA session so let's start by a brief memory refresh about wireless energy transfer wireless power transmission happens by creating an uh, alternating magnetic field on the transmitter coil this magnetic field is converted into electrical current in the receiver coil the generated electrical current depends on the amount of flux generated by the transmitter coil and how much a percentage of a percentage of the receiver coil is able to capture the distance the distance the size and the position of the receiver coil relative to the transmitter coil decides the coupling factor or coefficient of both coils ever since the concept of wireless power transfer became popular both science and engineers came up with various ways to realize this to realize this concept these methods are or can be classified based on the distance of transmission maximum power and method used to achieve this power transmission at the high level we can define we can find near and far field power transmission far field wireless power transmission is achieved by electromagnetic radiation including microwave power and laser or light power while the near field transmission is established by electromagnetic induction induction loads so uh, it includes several methods like inductive coupling in which we will be focusing in this webinar So wireless energy transmission is widely used in many applications and fields such uh, in our daily life applications, transport, electrification and medical field. The wireless charger is very useful for charging home based devices like smartphone, laptops, iPad, notebooks and so on. So this it is less it has less cables and connectors so it reduces the amount of cable used in this uh, system it can be also used to empower electric vehicles battery without any contact without wires so uh, a lot of research offers are put to and uh, conducted to find an optimal way to use buried wireless charger in the road so one of the technology is to charge cars while they are moving so this is uh, one of the application uh, it provides a convenient safe and effective way to transfer power without any medium so it is uh, environmental uh, friendly so it doesn't harm or injure human or any live uh, living being so it's it has no wires so it can be also uh, used to charge medical implants such as pacemakers so which is uh, which reduces the uh, or improves the quality of life and reduces any risk of infection because of maintenance and so on battery uh, changing and so on so so uh, but this technology still has some disadvantages so like it is less efficiency or it has less efficiency compared to the wired and it has a lower power transmission so uh, it costs also it costs more than the cable charger uh, repairing and maintenance is a little bit difficult uh, not it is not suitable uh, suitable for high power delivery this is these are some uh, disadvantages of wireless uh, charging systems 
Let's move now to see the main design challenges can be posed by a, a wireless power charger used in electric vehicles. So the main issues, and as mentioned, uh, one of them is uh, having l is having a low efficiency because of the high air gap distance and misalignment problems, especially during parking. So. Dif different solutions are investigated and tested to improve the efficiency of these chargers also they can cause some issues whether for electronic devices of the car or a human being because of high electromagnetic radiation when operating at high frequencies so the systems can operate at high frequency which can cause uh, some uh, electromagnetic interference the size moreover the size and the weight of the charger is critical especially for cars uh, it should uh, have a very light and compact structure so uh, we should develop systems that are compact and uh, light in terms of uh, weight different electromagnetic losses during operation and especially at, ha at fast charging so we all we always uh, trying to reach fast charging so this can cause or can generate high level of temperatures can heat uh, devices the, the devices this heat should be also maintained low by reducing the losses and improving the cooling systems so this is another issue the cost is one of the major parameters so the cost of the system so the charger should be efficient but not too costly should we, we should improve the system but we should not or we should maintain the cost at low level so EMX solution provides a wide range of tools so electromagnetic analysis uh, tools and features to help engineers to overcome overcome these and find solution for these issues so uh, one of the solutions so we are proposing or the features is the is the use of multi configuration and parameterization this will allow to build and test multiple configuration and uh, under different scenarios and iterations so you you can test different designs within a single uh, model so you can try a couple of uh, maybe uh, designs of your system also we can couple the physics of the model to the circuit system so you can we can use the circuit simulator of ems and emx 2d which which are our electromagnetic simulation software one of for the 3d and the second is for 2d analysis so we have the capability to couple the physics the uh, magnetic analysis uh, analysis to a circuit so you can model your circuit inside ems or emos 2d we provide also harmonic and transient simulation so we have both analysis uh, different em uh, loss calculations so it helps uh, to generate different EM losses so you can compute eddy loss, core loss, copper loss and so on. Also uh, our solution came is with uh, an embedded thermal and structural uh, solver so uh, without the need of exporting or importing any data so within uh, your uh, simulation uh, one uh, simulation environment so you can have like magnetic analysis plus thermal plus structural plus circuit so the are uh, they are all embedded with within same environment within same platform so you don't need to go outside this platform to do uh, this multi-physics coupling or analysis okay so these are some uh, issues and our proposed solution is it contains 2d and 3d analysis we will have a live demonstration about this solution later uh, after uh, covering some uh, other topics okay so uh, this is uh, these are examples of some application analyzed with earmarks package so uh, as can be seen in the left right side uh, you can in the left side sorry a wireless charger for implantable uh, use it in implantable pacemaker this is a small wireless charger system uh, also on the right side you can see uh, any two examples of a car wireless chargers these two different uh, systems uh, at the bottom uh, is a smartphone wireless charger so as can be seen so EMS or EMS 2D package can help to solve different type or different wireless uh, systems and use it in different applications
Okay, now we will uh, have a look on uh, different topologies used uh, of wireless power charger used in electric vehicles. Uh, one of them is circular and rectangular or rectangular coil. So this is one of the systems, uh, both so circular and rectangular coils based wireless chargers are commonly used or utilized in electrical cars and this magnetic in this uh, system is in these systems the magnetic field is single sided it has one side in out path from the front side of the coil so as can be seen some flux distribution uh, provided by em works so at the right side at the bottom right side okay we move these are three topologies so uh, d d coil uh, which is double coil double coil ddq coil and bipolar coil are also some topologies that are used in wireless charging systems for electric vehicles these topologies provide certain improvements in terms of coupling coefficient and the allow more tolerance for misalignment so they can solve uh, some of the issues of misalignment also they can came with a ferrite uh, and aluminium uh, plate to uh, improve uh, or to improve the magnetic flux and reduce the losses and improve the shielding so it can uh, to reduce the electromagnetic radiation so they can came with these two additional uh, structures so with ferrite bars or plate plus aluminium plates okay here is a comparison so EMS now which is uh, as I said or as we mentioned it earlier is one of uh, our EMOX uh, of solution tools. It's a 3D electromagnetic simulation software. Is used to compute can be used to compute the coupling coefficient. So we use uh, EMS to compute the coupling coefficient between two uh, coils. So for for the different topologies, so we use EMS to compute the coupling. The, the coupling coefficient for the different topologies so when there is no misalignment at zero uh, millimeter so it means no misalignment they are centered the three topologies dd pad and bipolar coil and ddq pad have a quite similar coupling coefficient which is higher than 0 0.5 while it is lower than 0 0.4 or 3 sorry for the single uh, rectangular coil if the receiver is located now is, uh, is located 0.5 millimeter away from the axis of the transmitter the co the coupling coefficient drops for all the topologies both ddq pad uh, have uh, and uh, bipolar coils have the highest coupling coefficient at 0.5 millimeter so as uh, misalignment as you can see in the right side uh, the bipolar pad plus uh, ddq pad have higher uh, coupling coefficient at 0.5 millimeter meter of misalignment okay so uh, we can say that these two coils have close coupling coefficients but the ddq pad increases the size and the co the cost of the charger since it has one more additional coil so the ddq pad has three coils while the d uh, the people are bipolar coil has only two coils so if we use the ddq pad we will increase the size and the cost of the charger while the both have similar quite similar uh, quite similar performance so they have like a quite similar coupling coefficient also the heat generated may increase in the ddq because we have additional copper loss because we have as I we mentioned it, ha it has one more additional coil. This table summarizes the different characteristics of the commonly used pads. So combining and studying these different parameters can lead us to choose the popular coil as a good option for a wireless charger system implemented and used in electrical uh, vehicles. So it can be seen that uh, ddq and dd coil uh, ddq and bipolar uh, pad the uh, the tolerate uh, misalignment better than the other topologies they have a good coupling coefficient low electromagnetic interference and a high shielding 
shielding. So this is uh, for the DDQ and bipolar coil. Okay, so uh, the following design. So we, since the popular pod is um, the most efficient among the, th the topologies that we studied, we uh, we have chosen this topology for the rest of the analysis. So this is these are the, some details and uh, specification of the simulated uh, power uh, wireless power uh, charger. So. It is uh, built and created inside SOLIDWORKS and also can be uh, created and uh, using Autodesk Inventor since EMS is integrated inside Autodesk Inventor as well. So it has two, this system has two overlapped coils at both the transmitter and the receiver sides. The coils are made of five turn uh, turners each uh, with eight millimeter wide diameter. The ferrite support and the aluminum shielding plate are modeled as well. So later on, an uh, LCC, LLC compensation circuit will be analyzed to operate, to operate at maximum power and efficiency. So through this, these analysis, these analysis, we want to highlight the impact of both the ferrite support and the aluminum plate for the, this wireless power system. So. From uh, the three top figures, we can see th that there is too much flux leakage and there is no return path for the magnetic fields. So this reduces the efficiency of the system. When we added the ferrite, the leakage is minimized and more and stronger flux is located in the middle region between both uh, the transmitter and the receiver coil. Uh, by adding further the aluminum, the radiation region is reduced further and more magnetic field is concentrated in the working zone which is in between uh, coils despite having the ferrite, ferrite bars and the aluminum plate uh, which should help to improve the efficiency and reduce the electromagnetic interference this may lead this may lead to generate more heat because of the electromagnetic losses and increase uh, the weight and the cost of the charger. That's why further analysis are required to minimize the losses and the heat can be generated. Moreover, the shape and the structure of the ferrite and the aluminum can be also optimized to reduce their weight. So, yeah, the ferrite and the aluminum can help to uh, reduce the, sh the, uh, the radiation and improve the efficiency of the system, but they can uh, generate more heat because of the losses, because of the core loss, because of the eddy loss in, the, in these uh, structures and also their weight can be heavy for such system. So that's why it should, it should be maintained as low as possible. So uh, now we are studying the coupling coefficient okay, versus misalignment, X misalignment. So the coupling coefficient of, for example, one of the coils R R1 TX1 TX2 increases with the misalignment. This ensures a certain level of efficiency even with a uh, misalignment issue. So it can be seen that we have three coils. Uh, sorry, we have two coils. So uh, R1 T T2. So the coupling coefficient of R1 and T2 increases despite the misalignment. So this means that we can increase the coupling coefficient even we are going further from the center of our uh, transmitter. So this is one of the advantage of such topology. Now we are uh, performing uh, like a Y misalignment. So the coupling coefficient is also uh, is reducing, but it stays at a good level which is around 0 0.3 so this is uh, a good uh, level of uh, coupling coefficient despite the misalignment so which is up to 0 0.3 meter now another uh, misalignment which is a diagonal mis misalignment so which is long x y direction so it's it is like a diagonal uh, direction so can show that the, the coupling coefficient is still higher than 0 
which is a little bit good coupling coefficient despite this kind of misalignment. So a conclusion that the bipolar pad provides a good coupling coefficient at different misalignment misalignment. So it's, it has some certain of uh, I mean it has some uh, good uh, coupling coefficient despite the misalignment that is happening. So uh, this is another comparison between uh, bipolar and uh, versus a singular a single rectangular coil uh, at 0 0.5 millimeter uh, meter horizontal misalignment. So a comparison here is established to show why the coupling coefficient is higher at 0 0.5 meter for the bipolar coil compared to the single uh, rectangular coil. So we can observe from this simulation that there is more there are more flux lines that go to the receiver coil in case of the bipolar coil compared to the single coil. Also, the, high, uh, the highest magnetic flux density is closer to the receiver coil for the bipolar coil. This can explain why, in the, uh, or why this topology allows uh, a better or tolerate better the misalignment. So we can have like high coupling coefficient despite the misalignment. Uh, compared to other topologies. Now, uh, however, the coupling coefficient is improved with the use uh, of different optimized topologies, but this still this is still below the requirements of certain application like applications like electric vehicle charging. So this, despite the improvement and the coupling coefficient, we still below certain requirements. So an an LCC, sorry, this. LCC compensation network can be used to increase the delivered power as well as the efficiency of the system. After running EMS analysis, both input and output power were computed using the tabular results of an EC magnetic study. It can be observed that the input and output power have a peak have peak values around 85 kHz, which is the resonant frequency. So our LCC circuit were computed the, these uh, parameters were uh, those parameters were computed based on resonant, uh, resonant frequency of 85 kilohertz uh, kilohertz and also using uh, the inductance the mutual and the self inductance uh, generated by EMS so we run uh, EMS study to compute the self inductance then we use them to ex extract the resonant uh, circuit parameters which are the capacitance and the inductance, the added inductance and capacitance. So, uh, yeah, then uh, as we mentioned, so the input and output power have peak values around 85 kilohertz, and the efficiency uh, through these power, the efficiency is concluded, and it has a maximum of 95 uh, percent at the resonant frequency. So this uh, circuit, this LCC uh, circuit, improved the input and output power as well as the efficiency so yeah now another issue which is the losses so the losses generated in our system are computed and investigated using EMS so we run EMS analysis then we can see uh, we can compute the eddy loss in the aluminum shields the core loss in the bars and the winding loss so these plots shows uh, the results, the mentioned results generated by EMS. These losses are converted into heat. So we use EMS thermal coupling analysis to compute this heat. So is uh, the, the, the heat or the losses are our load for the thermal solver. So the inputs for the thermal solver are automatically sent by EMS. So we don't need to export or import any data. So within the same study, we can solve uh, electrothermal uh, analysis. So this, uh, these uh, temperature are generated using an AC magnetic coupler to thermal analysis. So you can see, we can see the temperature in the whole charger. So uh, at the left side, the top left side. So the temperature reached a maximum of 67 degrees. Uh, the temperature is uh, in the aluminium is also has a maximum of 67 degrees. Uh, the temperature in the ferrite is around 63 degrees, 
while the temperature in the coils is around uh, 51 degrees in the coils that are touching the ferro uh, the ferrite separate so while the, the coils the other coils uh, have lower temperature around maybe 32 19, uh, 29 degrees the left animation shows the temperature variation versus time so we run a transient thermal analysis so we can see the temperature versus time so uh, the right side figure shows the temperature at uh, 2d plot of the temperature versus time so at a specific point now we are going to a live demonstration we will have a look into EMS inside its um, I mean EMR solution inside its environment which is SOLIDWORKS uh, platform so so yeah this is uh, SOLIDWORKS so we are, we are now inside SOLIDWORKS as mentioned so uh, our proposed solution for today is EMS for 3D electromagnetic analysis and EMRX 2D is for two-dimensional electromagnetic analysis so they are both fully embedded inside SOLIDWORKS so it can be seen so this is our uh, 3D model so whether you create it inside SOLIDWORKS or you bring it from another CAD tool so you can export it export and import it to SOLIDWORKS so once you have a uh, geometry ready for simulation you go to EMS or EMRS 2D tab then start by creating a new study so as you can see through this right uh, click so you can go to study and here is uh, the modules that came with EMS so we have a magnetostatic AC magnetic and transit magnetic so the these are uh, for a magnetic analysis so we have magnetostatic for DC static analysis AC for harmonic analysis and transient for transient magnetic analysis so you can define whatever whatever excitation you have using transit magnetic so you can define sinus dual pulse your you, you uh, or you import your uh, excitation through any external file whether it is excel or text file and we have electrostatic for static electric field analysis electro conduction for uh, dc conduction problems and ac electric which is equivalent to ac magnetic analysis in addition to these modules we have a coupling so let's do this we have a few multiphysics options which are thermal coupling so you can couple your analysis to thermal uh, structural which is linear static motion and circuit so you can uh, perform electromagnetic analysis coupled to one or more of these options so you can choose for example thermal plus motion plus circuit so in case we have an, an electric machine so for example you can also uh, do thermal plus circuit thermal plus uh, structural so you can generate uh, uh, thermal stress and so on so these combinations are possible and allowed so you within the same study within a single same stu study so you don't need to go outside or use any import or uh, export of data all right some advanced properties so you can switch from solvers and meshing so we have user defined mesh or adaption uh, mesh so adaptive mesh let's go back to general properties so you can see here parameterization is uh, this feature uh, allows to uh, parameterize both geometrical and uh, simulation variables so you can parameterize a distance a dimension a sketch dimension and whatever so you can uh, define it as a variable and you run it within your study with parametric study so and you can uh, parameterize simulation variables like current voltage and so on all right so this is overall about ems so once you choose for example your study uh, the coupling that you want to do for example let's specify thermal thermal for 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 thermal sorry we cover both steady state and transit steady state gives you the final temperature results and transit you can you can see the temperature variation and evolution versus time right okay maybe we can do circuit for this typical analysis 
discuss quickly so a new study is created so this is ems3 what's called ems3 so you have uh, the list of the material so we can see the list of the material at the top uh, section so you can uh, define your material so we can for example define aluminium right click apply material so then uh, a material library uh, open so this material library came with the software installation so it's the default library it has several categories several materials so and you can also uh, adjust modify the existing materials or import your own specific material so you can define your materials through this library so whether uh, you have a pH curve, PB curve, uh, temperature dependent material so it's all feasible using this material then after you define the material we have the boundary condition the electromagnetic inputs so you specify the coil for example you have a solid whether you have a solid or a wound coil so we choose which is uh, your coil then select for example let's select a wound coil uh, through this uh, through the wound coil you can specify I mean the entity you choose the entity then you go to general properties where you specify the number of turners and here for example since we did coupling circuit coupling we only uh, specify in this uh, page the number of turners and the wire diameter whether the wire diameter or the coil filling factor so you can uh, uh, define one of them so whether it's or the uh, the, the wire gauge so it's it, the, we have three three variables so whether the wire gauge number or the wire diameter or the filling factor so the filling factor helps you to I mean put some reasonable wire diameter or wire gauge okay so once you define your coil then you move to the next step so if you have I mean uh, if you need to compute a force or torque so you can specify this force and torque whether use the option of virtual work for a ferromagnetic parts or a Lorentz for for a conductive parts with a current then you move to thermal inputs so you specify uh, I mean the boundary condition and if you have any loads so you can specify some conditions like temperature uh, volume heat heat flux radiation convection or whatever then we have the mesh section so we you can use the default mesh so EMS so uh, this measure came with some settings so you can use these sets the settings to adjust the mesh or you can also apply mesh controls so you can specify specific mesh con mesh element size in a specific uh, part or a surface so you can specify your mesh control so you, if you want a finer or a coarser mesh so you can use this option in a specific regions for specific parts or surfaces then after that so we have the circuit case since we did a circuit coupling then you can uh, create your circuit here for example let's see show the schematic so we can see here a couple of options so we have uh, resistance inductance capacitance and sources and in case you are doing like transient uh, uh, transient analysis you will be able to add diodes switches and so on so especially for uh, electric machine analysis yeah so this is briefly and overall uh, about EMS so this the main steps these are the main steps you need to do to perform a setup and run your analysis uh, and get your results after getting so I mean after running this analysis you will be able to get this this kind of results so let uh, I already performed some simulations here so let me check okay so we have for example this is the circuit the LCC circuit so you can see what I have done uh, okay then we have results two results uh, folders we have electromagnetic results since we did thermal plus uh, electromagnetic plus thermal analysis so we have two results so we have this uh, results table from in the electromagnetic results we have the inductance flux linkage impedance resistance coupling coefficient which is the most important uh, parameter one of the most pa important parameters for such system leakage and current 
and use advantage losses here as can be seen so core loss and so on so this is these are the main i mean the main quantities that are computed computed by the software so yeah in addition to these tabular results we have a set of uh, 3d results including the magnetic the magnetic flux results h field the current the applied current density and the overall current density so this is the total current density the systems it, it includes both ad and applied ad current so it, let's maybe have a look into the ad currents generated in the aluminium shields so we have force density electric field loss density losses so you can see the losses using this plots so yeah is the solid loss results in this the ad actually it is the ad loss results in this plate then in addition to the magnetic analysis uh, or results we have the thermal folder so results we have temperature temperature gradient heat flux heat loss heat loss and so on so you can let's for example plot this okay we can create a new plot then since we uh, did transit analysis transit magnet transient thermal analysis sorry so we have the temperature versus time so we can change the time and we see the variation so this is the temperature so you can animate this plot and after the animation you can export this into a, a video so you can save this as a video this animation and yeah so here save your file and so on okay just to not forget so we have a couple of options for the post processing so we have no clipping section plate clipping and iso clipping so you can do this with the fringe plot you can do this the same with the vector plot so you have no clipping and section clipping so you can do section a uh, cross section view in uh, with a vector plots and we have the field lines so we can also plot the field lines and this 2d plot so you can uh, select two points or one point versus time versus i mean scenario or whatever so you can uh, find this i mean you can plot these results after you okay uh, exploring your results you can generate a report of your results so just click this and a report will be generated So it, it is uh, taking some uh, screenshots of the results we uh, plotted. Then it will generate a Word or HTML file. Right here. Okay, you can see all the setup that we already defined and the results we obtained. You can save this and share it with your colleagues. Yeah this is overall about ems let me switch to emos 2d so in case you have like a model that has a two-dimensional symmetry whether it is planar or axisymmetric i mean rotational symmetry okay i'm gonna switch okay let's suppose that i have this model this is a wireless charging system that has a two-dimensional symmetry which is a rotational symmetry around its axis around the axis so i can perform a 2d analysis analysis using this model so i have a 3d model an original 3d model for example whether it is as i mentioned built or created inside solidworks or uh, imported from another CAD tool so you don't need to recreate your 2d geometry to do a 2d analysis using emr d so you go you define a corner system so a coordinate system based on the symmetry that you have so this is my i have like a rotational symmetry i define as this coordinate system the z axis of my local coordinate system coincides with the rotate the symmetry axis of my system of, of my model then i model then i go to emors 2d then okay you select 2d simplification feature so now you choose whether you have a planar or axisymmetric uh, I mean model then let's 
choose it is not a planar it is an axisymmetric model then we choose the coordinate system we already define it then say okay it will automatically generate a 2d model it does not delete the 3d model so it will you will obtain a new 2d model from your existing one but it does not delete the old one so you will be able to have both a 3d plus 2d model within the same geometry then if you uh, for example want to do some changes whether in 2d or 3d this change or these changes will be automatically converted to the other to the second model so you don't need to perform for example you want to do 2d analysis uh, so many iterations of 2d analysis adjusting modifying the geometry and so on but at the end you want to uh, do or finish or validate your 2d uh, results with a 3d analysis which is more accurate usually so you don't need to uh, re recreate the changes or you define the changes that you did in the geometry you will be able to find them automatically in your uh, 3d geometry okay uh, since i did already this we have another option that allows you to show whether the 2d the 3d or both of them so okay i'm gonna show the 2d model that i already created using the 2d simplification so now it shows it hides the 2d model as uh, 3d model sorry and it shows the 2d model okay this is our 2d model so if this is the model that we generated just okay gonna hide this it can be seen that you have I mean you still have your 3d uh, parts with the 2d with the new 2d model so okay let's go back here so we do the we do the same steps so we create a study so but unlike the 3d we have only four modules for the 2d analysis so we have magnetostatic electrostatic ac magnetic and transit magnetic plus motion coupling so you have uh, thermal translational rotational and circuit coupling so it's uh, feasible using this uh, the 2d uh, analysis okay i already created an ec magnetic analysis so with the same steps you define your materials and so on so you have the windings so primary and transmitter and receiver coils mesh and so on okay let's let's try to have a look and some results so the inner air okay new plot fringe plot okay so this is the magnetic flux okay we have a high magnetic flux in the far right here let's uh, plot also the lines contour lines so you can see here the line the field lines here can be also generated through this plot so yeah now we can see the field lines so uh, since the distance or the air gap is high so it can be seen that this system has a low coupling coefficient so this is because of the high uh, distance between transmitter and receiver okay let's at least let's superimpose the 2d plot with the 3d model so we can show the three both of them and superimpose the plot the 2d plot with the 3d model so you can see your plots superimposed projected uh, into your 3d geometry all right so that's all for the live demonstration back to our presentation now let's move to the conclusion so EMWorks solution for wireless power transfer systems was uh, explored so we have uh, seen the AMR solution which is basically EMS for 3D electromagnetic analysis with a few multi-physics options plus AMR 2D which is for which is dedicated for 2D uh, two-dimensional simulation electromagnetic simulation so it's dedicated for uh, planar and axisymmetric problems so you can use both of them in case we have a model that is a two-dimensional uh, symmetry 
then uh, different topologies of wireless power chargers used in electric vehicles were investigated so we have seen which is which uh, is the best topology that can provide uh, high coupling coefficients and tolerate misalignments uh, also the coupling coefficient of the uh, bipolar coil were computed under different misalignment using ems parametric studies lcc circuit was modeled using uh, ems circuit simulator and simulated using uh, the circuit uh, coupled uh, analysis so power and efficiency were calculated uh, losses and heat were estimated using uh, EMS couplet to thermal solver okay these are our references now uh, let's move to the QA session so yeah thank you thank you for your attention